Hi, everyone. I'd like to say a very big thank you to Carl and the TEDx Bristol team for doing such a fantastic job and also for inviting me. Um, I'm Tia Kansara. I'm a business person, person and also a UCL PhD um, researcher. Kansara Hackney Limited is the first sustainable lifestyle consultancy in the UK. We advise businesses, uh, governments and the United Nations worldwide. And one of our first jobs was in Costa Rica where we, um, where we were speaking on the uh, Caribbean Biennale. And our second job, within three weeks of starting the firm, was actually in Saudi Arabia, where we were on a panel of judges to um, pick the architects for a special project in Saudi Arabia. And whilst we were on this project, and we, were, we had 13 of the top firms in architecture that we were uh, looking through, I was the only woman on the panel, but I was also the only woman in the building. And it was quite a, an interesting um, experience. And after the full panel, we were then asked, my business partner and I, to do a comparative report between the top three architects. And they happened to be Foster and Partners, Woods Bagot, and HOK. And when we visited the London office of Foster and Partners, we found that um, on the left-hand side, there was this fantastic poster of the zero-carbon, zero-waste city. And, I, and it was at that time that I asked myself, zero-carbon, zero-waste, sustainable lifestyle, what does this mean? And this was the beginning of my PhD. I'm under the guidance of Dr. Ian Ridley and Professor Eve Cabanis, and I'm at the Bartlett School of Graduate Studies. And my um, PhD aims to concentrate on the design of sustainable cities in the future, but also the um, closing the loop, the feedback loop in the construction industry, but most importantly, how we can improve our well-being in buildings. And it aims in the long term to impact architecture and engineering processes worldwide. For a moment, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine what you see in Bristol in 2050. I can see some people sneaking some looks at me. Whilst you've got your eyes closed, I want you to imagine that beautiful person next to you who's the love of your life. And as you zoom out, you've got a bird's eye view of your home, your garden, the fresh fruits and vegetables that you've been growing. You can see as you zoom out further, people laughing on the street. And, and you, you start to imagine the, the grandchildren that you have and they're working in the company that you spent 40 years developing. As you're hovering in your flying machine, you, you, you see that the urban environment has changed dramatically. In fact, you don't see buildings anymore. You see, you see plants. You see buildings that have changed into biosynthetic intelligent systems that can photosynthesize and metabolize just like plants can. And as you're doing this, you feel very connected to the earth and the ecosystem. When you come across another organism, it's not a race to survive them, but to feel connected in a way that helps you synergize with them. And you feel that you have a symbiotic relationship with them. Are you happy with what you see? Is this a reality? If we dare to dream, we can dare to believe. I love sustainable things. As soon as there's a gadget that's on the market, which is 50% less um, energy um, in, um, consuming and 100% less um, environmentally unfriendly, I get so excited about telling all of my friends about it. In fact, I'm so happy. I'm the happiest when I find a new piece of, of research and I can pass it along my network of friends and colleagues and I, can, and, and I can share that information just like graphene. Graphene is um, a derivative of graphite and most importantly, it's stronger than steel. It, is, um, it can conduct electricity and on top of that, it's so flexible, it can be used for anything. Can you imagine the plethora of uses of this one graphene that can be used in the future for connecting our smart grids, let's say, and making our electricity consumption and use so that we minimize any sort of loss? This is the way that we're moving. Another form of technology which I've come across quite recently is by a friend of mine called Dr. Rachel Armstrong, who's created the, the protocell, which aims to reduce uh, carbon in the environment. And she does this um, by 
metabolizing, the protist cell metabolizes the carbon and petrifies itself. So can you imagine the application of this in a place like Venice? Venice is sinking. So imagine if you were to add these protist cells in the, the canal system, which would then make a, a, a petrified layer underneath the buildings and stop them from sinking. Recently in Leicester University, University of Leicester, they found this way of diagnosing an illness without looking inside your body. So imagine about five 10 years from now, you'll be able to scan, just like Star Trek, scan this person in front of their body and, and diagnose their illness almost immediately. This is the way that we're heading. What defines you is your ability to be part of a community and the environment within a city in particular. So when we look at Bristol, what do we see? We see it's one of the most sustainable cities in the, in, in the UK. And Bristolians, through the research of Rose Bailey in 2006, found that the CO2 emissions just for this one, one region, Bristol region itself, has reached something like 8.3 million tons of CO2. Um, and as a result of that, in response to this, um, this research, the UK government has decided to pledge that they will reduce carbon emissions by the year 2050 by up to about 80%. Now, this is yet to be seen. However, in, in Bristol itself, the urban environment is expanding so quickly that in the next 15 years, we're expecting a projection of about 27% increase. But what we find is Bristol is one of the most sustainable cities, and therefore, in 2050, we're aiming for about 50% of our waste to be reduced, recycled. Um, and already right now, we're finding that new buildings have got 20% of their electricity coming from renewable energy sources. And, um, and, what, and what's really fascinating for me is that whenever I look at a city, I don't just look at the urban um, agriculture or I don't just look at the urban um, architecture. I look at people. I look at their health and I look at lifestyle. So what's really interesting of what John Savage has said is that one of the most important things is even though the Bristolian um, income has doubled, we're more dissatisfied than ever before. And I wonder why that is, because after the recent riots in the UK, it doesn't matter how much fancy architecture you have, it doesn't matter how fancy your car is, ultimately, there's one thing missing. I wonder what that is. And quite recently, I've been coming across happiness in a different field altogether. Um, the one asset that you have is the happiness that you hold inside you. And in Bhutan, quite recently, whilst I was advising the royal family on their next stage of economic development, away from fossil fuels, I realized that they've defined a new way of being. And isn't that interesting that we could use this in our own lives, in our own city, just like Bristol? So the opportunities that we find in the next 39 years can be a plethora of, of opportunities, but the most important thing is that you are at the center of them. So if you can build a city in the desert with no water and no food, what can Bristol not do? The truth of the matter is that within a city environment, you and I are the most important factors because we make up the city. So when we look at cities in the future, we'll be looking at community architecture a lot more. Um, Dr. Rod Hackney pioneered community architecture in the UK and built a role for people in communities. And that role is, is where we can define a duty for ourselves, where we can integrate with that society and find a method of creating enterprise. And that enterprise is something that I see on a daily basis with the Sandbox Network, which is um, a group of 600 businesses that I see leading the future in, in, um, in, in business. Um, also, we have lots of different platforms on um, sustainable living and the upgrade of the way that we can see our lives upgrade or the earth upgrading. And this platform that I'm currently on is called Earth 2.0. So finally, I'm going to leave you with a little digital show by Obscura Digital. Um, and I hope you really like it because it's one of the ways that you could regenerate an old environment and create a sort of an, a technological tinge. So I'm going to leave you, leave you to it. And thank you very much.